And now with us to discuss the ongoing bombardment of Ukraine, Chabad Rabbi of Mariupol, Rabbi Mendel Cohen. Rabbi, thank you so much for joining us. Now, I understand that you've actually left Ukraine, but you're still in contact with your community. Can you tell me, you know, about what they're going through right now? I had some contacts today. Some members of our community had uh, the opportunity to call. We had a very short phone call to just say, hi, we are alive. So the information I got from the town that uh, it's already uh, members of our community, Jews, and also many non-Jews, they reaching out and they share that uh, in the last nine days they have no food, medicine, heat, water. Um, it's robbery in the streets. There is very, very hard to get out of the house. Um, heavy artillery. And they're looking for hope. They're looking for a corridor to get out from Mariupol, to drive west to Chernovtsi, Lvov, to find a shelter, to survive. Now there is hundreds of thousands of people, 400,000 people, who are fighting for their lives, looking for water, looking for a piece of bread, and uh, wow. we don't know much about our people that stay behind. Well, uh, they don't. They don't have uh, phone coverage or Wi-Fi or internet. We are very worried, and uh, we hope that uh, at least we will be able to get into the town some humanitarian aid, mm -hmm. food and medicine, and hopefully we'll be able to get them out. Now, m many Chabad houses uh, we know have been hosting as many citizens as possible in their shelters. Is your Chabad house doing the same? And if so, you know how many people can you uh, can can the house afford to host? As you mentioned, uh, supplies quickly running low, if not uh, depleted completely. We uh, we 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 uh, bought a lot of uh, food before the war. We had it in our shul, and we gave out to Jews and non-Jews uh, last week. And the Heavy artillery. Some people came to the Beit Chabad and asked for food. In our in our synagogue, there is no shelter, so we have no people who are hiding on our Beit Chabad. In our house, there is now a few families who are hiding. Just yesterday, Ksusha, um, a young girl who made Aliyah to Israel, she called me that her mother called her, and she said that uh, my house. Our apartment was uh, shut. I don't have a place to hide, and we don't have more food. And we were trying the best to find her, to give her the message that she can come to our house. At least she can have some food. At least uh, she won't be alone. Very difficult. I'm getting constantly, days and nights, phone calls from all over the world. People are asking, where is my daughter? Where is my grandmother? Holocaust survivors. Uh, two weeks, 16 days already in shelter. It's very cold now in Mariupol. I mean, may I ask why? I mean, obviously there are so, so many people who have physical limitations, but why haven't more left the city like you did? I mean, as you said, there's also this psychological war that's going on uh, at a cruel level uh, where they say that there's a humanitarian corridor, uh, but they're still shooting... Uh, often at that corridor. The truth is that nobody believed that uh, there will be anything like that. Our city is not one week or a day or a month under war. We are uh, the front line in the last eight years. We know how it looks like. In fact, we had tanks in 10 miles away from our house, from our Beit Chabad. I had to go for personal reason, but I had tickets to, to go back. There's no way to get back. It's a miracle that I'm not there. At least I have fun, and at least I have to. I can be connected with so many people. I have 600 uh, households that called me to help to evacuate the, the, pe the people from Mariupol. At least we can give help to people who left the city. Nobody believed that anything like this will happen. So, so again, very few. So again, is it even possible? really, for anyone to evacuate the city? Uh, you know, are there police escorts, for example? Is there, is there anybody going to help uh, with, with those evacuations? And, and in addition, you know, what maybe would you like to add that you'd like people to understand about this conflict that isn't already being said? 
There is five of five or six time they were announced that uh, there is a, a corridor to get out, and people took the risk. And you know, I'm not a politician. We have to be um, very concerned about our words. But it was impossible to get out. People got out. People got out. They took the risk. Some people never never will made it. They just they stay in the car. They stay in their cars in the middle of the way. They died in the middle of the way, in the middle of their journey. So uh, we, we call upon everybody that, can, that has influence to share the voice and to help our people uh, to ask for a corridor, to help our people to get out, to find a way to a better place, a safer place. If some of them would like to, to make Aliyah, please, everybody is helping them to do it and uh, at least to find a way how to give him some medicine and food for the moment. This is a, my call and uh, uh, my family, my wife, the kids, are, we are thinking about the, the families, the members of our community who visited our Beit Chabad in, in Purim, in Pesach, in Shabbat, or just came to the service to prayer. Where are they? Are they alive? Do they have some water? We just hope and pray for the good news very soon. Rabbi, thank, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll keep in touch. And, of course, good luck to your community. Thank you. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.